Hello and welcome to episode 40 of the Craving Crypto podcast. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about what the next bubble will look like and how you should play it. So let's get right into this. So you guys already know we start with the total market capitalization technical analysis first. And what we're looking at here is the prices over the past few days. I'm just going to go ahead and delete these arrows. You guys can look at this chart in the document if you want to see what those arrows look like. But as you can see, we're getting a nice bounce off of that support level that we were watching. Prices did reject a couple times off of that pattern. The little ascending triangle pattern that we had originally drawn kind of failed right here, but we're finding support again strong at this level. So I'm still predicting as our primary that we go for 240 billion. If we do hit this level, it wouldn't surprise me at all if we see some overshoot into the next resistance area before coming back down into itself again. So just be aware of that, that when markets really pick up, they FOMO. And I would not be at all surprised if this one saw a FOMO event due to the fact that a lot of coins would be breaking out of patterns, like Bitcoin Cash would be breaking out of this falling wedge pattern that it's making and Bitcoin would be breaking out of its triangle. So I would suspect that we'd get some FOMO based on that. Now, if we have a strong support failure of this level, I still wouldn't be at all surprised if we have a capitulation event, but currently the strength is definitely in the bulls as we just keep bouncing off support levels and making higher lows. The real goal is that we can make a higher high above this 228 level, because then that would confirm that this short-term uptrend is really strong and again, that would provide us with some FOMO as well. So things look pretty good. If we go over to the coinmarketcap.com where we look at all of our top movers for the day, we'll just go see what coin is going parabolic the most up here. So just scrolling down, we have Holo up 18%. We have Eternal Token up 31% right now. We have Aurora up 36%. Noah coin up 33% and then I believe we have Nexo was on here. I mentioned this a couple episodes back when I was teaching you guys how to buy dips on seven day trends and sure enough this one it's not quite as up as it was this morning. I believe it was up more like 22% this morning but this one is starting to break out after dipping a little bit onto its seven day uptrend. So this is an example of how that strategy is working for this one specifically. We did get some panic this morning from it, but that was a nice dip by that saw some upward momentum afterwards. So that's looking really cool. We'll go ahead and do some technical analysis on the top mover for the day. So that's going to be the coin signals dot trade. So this is the top mover for the day X E T and the ticker symbol or the name of the coin is eternal token. And we're really breaking out. I believe that that was because of a falling wedge pattern that had been forming along this downtrend. So we can go ahead and label that one. This is an example of all of the same falling wedges that keep breaking out in multiple coins. So we just see this pattern over and over lately. If we go into the smaller time frame, like the one hour, this does look, by the way, like there's probably not a ton of liquidity in this market. You can tell by the way the candlesticks are moving. It's really jaggedy, maybe lots of bots are trading it, but either way, there probably isn't a ton of volume in this market. If we hover our mouse over, yeah, about $500,000, a few hundred thousand. So we're, no, we're nowhere near the millions in volume for this one, so just be aware of that. But as we're breaking out of this pattern, we are seeing some bullish action come out of that. I wouldn't be surprised if this one does indeed FOMO higher to these other resistance points along the wedge. We can just label those because they were previous support levels. You can go ahead and clone this to get your other areas and resistance points that you'd be watching for taking profits if you are playing this coin on the shorter term. So those would be levels that we'd expect some profit taking. And just like I've explained in multiple of the other top movers that we've went over in the previous videos, this is going to reject at some point. So be aware of that. Don't be FOMOing in. If you have positions that you bought when it was good to enter somewhere in this place right here, then you can start to scale out as we go up. This is a very rounded pattern that we're seeing play out. If we can just take our art tool and go, go right here from the left over, can see that that's rounded quite a bit. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if that pattern fills 
and we go up to that resistance point right here that used to be support before we reject but that's just based on some geometry but either way this would be a profit taking zone for eternal token so today's subject is going to be really awesome we're talking about what the next bubble will look like from my perspective as an analyst and then also going into details of how I really think you should be playing it and thinking about how you should be playing it so that you don't really get stuck in the same mistakes that you may have made in the last run and in the last cycle. So I'm just going to go ahead and switch over to another tab on Chrome here and look at some of these charts that we've been looking at in the past. The first one that I want to bring up is the total market cap chart that we are really been doing technical analysis on daily in the Craven Crypto podcast. So what we see here is a parabolic run up on the upside, really that started in 2015. And we've started to get a corrective phase similar to the one that we saw in 2013, all the way to 2015. And the previous corrective phase went about 78%. If you count the wick in, it was closer to 80%. But I would still consider this to be a bounce off the dot 786 Fibonacci support level. And we're getting a similar story play out right here. So whenever you're thinking about how the next bubble will look or how the next market cycle will look, you have to understand that we get expansive processes and corrective processes. That's how the market cycle works. It's going to expand a bunch in value after it contracts a bunch in value. Generally, what we've seen in cryptocurrencies and with Bitcoin is that we retrace around 80%, sometimes a little bit less, like 78%, and then we return to a bullish trend. Some of the altcoins do like 80% corrections or even further, like a 90% correction that we saw in stuff like Ripple. So being aware of the cycle is really important so that you're not stuck on the wrong side of the cycle when you're playing them. But really the most important thing to remember is that you're not trying to ever call a top, you're just trying to play the trend in these cycles. And whenever you get a corrective process, it's the greatest opportunity in the entire market to be getting prepared for the next bull run. So what we've seen with Bitcoin and with cryptocurrency since the beginning of 2018, the corrective process that took place is really a huge opportunity. You have to look at it just like the stock market, which I'll pull up a chart or two on that in just a second here. But these cycles repeat themselves. So as long as you're not on the wrong end of it, as long as you're averaging out when everybody's greedy, and long as you're averaging in when everybody's fearful, you're gonna be okay whenever these bubbles play out. So we'll get into exactly how this might look into the next cycle in a second, but I really wanted to lay that out beforehand so that you understand that really whenever you correct in the market, there's no reason to get fearful it just plays out over and over again, the same in both cryptocurrencies and in stocks. So as long as there's demand for that market and with something like Bitcoin as a store of value and potentially a currency for a lot of places where their currency isn't working well, there's demand and it's gonna stay. So you play the trend. There's a big picture uptrend with Bitcoin and with the rest of the markets. And we're gonna to continue to treat them as an uptrend and play that trend. It's the smartest thing to do. I'll show you the NASDAQ in a second since like the 1800s and really lay out why the best thing to do is buy dips and then just think big picture and expect continuation. So first I'm gonna show you some Bitcoin cycles on the Brave New Liquid Index for Bitcoin. Really since 2010, we can get a pretty good idea of what's happened in Bitcoin. So we're gonna go ahead and look at these cycles and analyze them and really understand how these bubbles work because Bitcoin has been through multiple market cycles, multiple overvaluation phases and recovered from them and continue to see upside growth. So if we just zoom into one of the first big cycles that we saw in Bitcoin, as you can see back here in 2010, we started to accumulate. We got a little sell-off phase here. We got a really, really big parabolic run up and then a retrace. Now this retrace, if we measure the percentage of this retrace, you'll see that it was a 92% correction, which is a really big correction, but you have to remember that this was 2011 Bitcoin. There's not very many exchanges, it's very illiquid, not very many people know about it, and the market cap was really small. So it's gonna be really volatile. As market cap increases, the volatility decreases because it takes more money to move the same amount in percentage. So that was a really big correction for Bitcoin. 
And then if we really look at the next cycle that came afterwards, you just started to go parabolic. We got a bullish trend. We had a little bit of a corrective process that took place right here. And then we really returned to that bullish trend and that market cycle saw more upward movement. And then we got another correction in Bitcoin. This was a bigger correction. So this one would be the blow off of a full market cycle. This was the first sell off. This was the hype phase. And then this was the corrective process that took place. So if we measure, this one was about an 85% correction. So as you can see, we've, we've actually corrected less in percentage than we did in the previous cycle that took place. So let's just go ahead and look at this next cycle for Bitcoin. We'll pull down, we'll zoom out, and we'll look here, and we'll see what percentage that we've corrected so far. And this could always correct further, but as of yet, we've corrected about 70%. So the percentage that we've been correcting is getting less and less. I personally think that if we go a little bit further down, it won't be any more than about the 78% correction for Bitcoin. So the thing that I'm really watching here is the corrections are getting less in percentage because the market cap is increasing and the liquidity is getting bigger. There's more exchanges that people can trade it and there's more people trading it and there's more money in it. So that means that the volatility decreases. As Bitcoin continues to mature, these corrections will get less and less brutal. Now, you still don't want to be on the wrong side of the correction, and you still want to be taking your profits very slowly in your long term along the bull trend, and then taking your profits quickly in your short term, locking those short term trades in and compounding them so that you don't get stuck on the wrong side of the trend here. But just understand that when you do get a corrective process, and the bubble pops and the market cycle resets, those corrections are getting less and less as Bitcoin grows and it, as it gets more mature, which is really good as a store of value. What I'm really saying here is when the next market cycle comes and the next bubble comes for Bitcoin, the next overvaluation phase, whatever you wanna call it, don't be scared. And that's really important because scared money doesn't make money. If you're too scared to be long when it's good to be long, you won't be profiting off the market going up. And if you're too scared to be short and accumulating while the prices are going down, you'll miss the next run when everything returns to its bull trend. It's really not about finding the exact top of that. It's about being in the market when the conditions are good, being out of the market and accumulating when the panic is intense and playing the cycles as they go. So one of the things that I want to point out with Bitcoin is we don't know how overvalued it's going to get in the next cycle. I really believe that 100,000 per coin is not out of the question, but you have to understand that that could overshoot. It could undershoot a few thousand, you know, 20,000 less. So it's really about averaging out, taking very turtle decisions in your long-term portfolio, slowly getting out, and then again in your short term, just locking in those gains and compounding them as the conditions are really good. What I think will happen is we'll get a similar repeat in my opinion, with the Bitcoin cycles, we're somewhere along a similar story to what happened in the 2014 cycle. So let me just pull up the BLX chart again here for you guys. And we'll go back and I'll take it off the logarithmic chart. I see us as being in a similar place in the Bitcoin story as right here. Right here before we go in for another parabolic run up in the markets. So if we see similar structure to that, and we get from, from the point that we broke out, we went from $250 up to about 1000 So if we get a similar kind of story play out with Bitcoin, and we get another parabolic run come out of this, so we can just take this chart actually, and you can grab with the bars pattern, and you can pull, and you can measure the last cycle, and you can just place it on top of where the next cycle is coming. And you can start to get an idea of the way that this market might, might expand and contract in the future. Now, I'm not saying it's going to look exactly like this. It's, that's not the point. The point is that we're going to get a parabolic run up in value. It'll get overvalued. People will get too excited. The media will hype it to all hell. And then we'll have to do a corrective process. And that corrective process, in theory, will become less as Bitcoin grows and as the market cap grows and as the maturity of the market grows. But as long as you're on the right side of the trend and accumulating when it's going down and taking little swing trades and taking swing trades along the way up 
and averaging out as you really break all time highs, you'll be okay. So that's kind of my perspective on what the next Bitcoin bubble will look like. I really hope this helps give you guys some perspective on things. I want to show you really quickly before we go what the stock market did so you can understand why the best thing to do is really be long term bullish on this type of stuff instead of be trying to figure out when this all ends or figure out how crypto will never be here again. I'm here to tell you that the demand is here for cryptocurrency and I truly believe that we'll continue to see market cycles play out and the uptrend will continue on the big picture and if we get swings along the way that's part of the volatility we're going to get corrections nothing goes up forever there has to be profit taking but as long as you're on the right side of the trend you're okay and by the way look at the stock market what what end of the trend do you think you should be on here if we see a little correction buy the dip this is a really big bullish trend in the stock market but let's switch to the log chart here and let's look from 1872 to today and let's understand what's happened here. Look at this. The stock market has continued to see upward trending movement because it has demand. Yes, there has been corrections along the way. Let's look at this correction here. Price range, we corrected 84% in value. That's similar to the 90% correction that we saw in the early, early Bitcoin. Let's look at what happened right here when we corrected. Internet bubble. In the S&P caused about a 52% correction. 2008 crash, you're talking about a 58% correction. This crash right here in the, let's see, in the 70s, about a 50% correction. So we're going to see corrections in, in crypto and in the stock market and in any market. But as long as you're on the right side of the trend, which is clearly up in all of these markets, by the way, then you'll be okay. So that's really what I wanted to teach today. Don't fight the trend. Don't try to call it top. Don't be the person that's trying to find the end of everything and call the top on the world <laughs> and all of these markets. Don't be like that. Just play these trends, accumulate panic and be on the right side of the market. So that's the lesson today. If you guys want to go ahead and sign up for Binance, I've got a referral link right here. Coin market cap chart so you can look at the analysis that we did today. Coinigy if you want to do technical analysis on altcoins. BitMEX if you want to do leverage trading, not recommended for beginners. If you like what I'm doing, I have a Bitcoin address right here. You can send donations that way. And my VIP course and signals if you want to get more hands on with your trading. Thank you so much for tuning in today's episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and drop them in the box below. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video. As always, stay profitable out there.